for now I just basically create a, a WinDBG uh, just to debug my uh, VMware machine. I just want to simply uh, disable uh, the driver signature enforcement for the debugger. And then I go to the HyperDBG cell. So let's just uh, connect these debugger and debug it together. You see how it works in the previous parts. And here again, I uh, I will use my com port to connect the debugger and the debugger. Uh, let's see, as it's the first time that I'm running it, it's a little complicated. Uh, now, now we can see that uh, the HyperDBG starts synchronizing symbol details between the debugger and it's good to go. Uh, I, I, I will press the uh, control plus C to just uh, halt the debugger. As you can see that everything is halted here. So I will use uh, use it here let me just try to minimize it as long well as so uh, we can use the uh, question mark command to evaluate everything for example if i want to see uh, the registers uh, the vm is just try to maximize itself why so here, yeah, yeah, it's better. Uh, let me see. There are some uh, registers. For example, I want to see RAX register, but that's not what I want to do currently. Uh, let's see this example. Yeah. Uh, here we have uh, some some registers. Here, uh, I want to see whether these registers are valid or not. Uh, for example, I want to see whether this is a valid address or not. I will simply use the DC command here. And yeah, this is a, a valid address. But how can how can we check it by using uh, HyperDBG's script engine? I just simply put a, a question mark here and put it between uh, these curly brackets. And in the curly brackets, I just simply put an if statement alongside the check address and in the parameter I will pass rex uh, which if it's equal to zero then print f address is valid or I just want to say it as an else statement, then I say that the uh, address is not but um, okay, let's just close everything. After that, we can see that uh, the or script is running there, and the uh, result is that address is valid. Uh, but but just that, let's just uh, use the notepad here. I just don't want to type it again and again. Okay. Um, here we go. This is our first example that we use uh, HyperDBG. 
we can also check for other addresses too. For example, we are, we are pretty sure that currently RDX is not a valid address. So let's check it here. R at some RDX. Uh, we will use this uh, simple script here. Oh, can I copy. I will use that. You can easily see that the uh, address is not valid. If I'm gonna uh, uh, see the value, uh, exact value of the RDX registers, uh, it's pretty clear as it's uh, zero. And so it's not valid here. <clears throat> Another thing is that we're gonna write simple loop. Let's say simple for loop which and the body of the for loop I will say that print f and uh, this is exactly the same as uh, the C languages uh, except that there are a limited uh, identifiers or uh, the, the are a limited uh, format strings that are supported by hyper -DG. so make sure to check the document i will not show it uh, this currently supported uh, format string uh, identifiers but if you want to uh, have an idea you can uh, see the documentation and see whether it's supported or not because we are currently working to add more identifiers uh, Add more support to more format string. Uh, I will put I here. I use the exact uh, sample that I use. Let's see if it works or not. Oh. Yeah, you can see that it counts to 16 because it's in interpreted as uh, a hexadecimal format. Also, uh, it's supported for uh, Nested loops are also supported, so let me just put uh, I back here and convert it to J. And I will say that it's equal to zero and J is equal to. Sure. Yeah, here's the result that we are currently expect that, that was expected. It just tries to iterate over these values. Uh, there are also other things. Uh, for example, you can evaluate the expressions. This is not a. Uh, this is uh, just a simple command that evaluate the expressions. For example, if I want to add Rx register to Rbx register, I will use the print command. Uh, this is exactly the same as uh, if if you want to use the print function, not print the, the print function, and use it like at sign Rx was at sign R B X. Yeah, this is the same. Uh, also, if you want to see other uh, uh, important parts like uh, important pseudo registers, for example, P name, let, let, let me show you the current executing process name uh we will use it like uh printf 
function which tries to uh, run an a string or show that an a string or the process name is then we will add uh, the dollar key name here and execute this script yeah you can see that uh, the current executing process name in the target uh, debuggy <coughs> Uh, is also uh, hyperdg that's uh, hyperdg cli dot e exe but however it's uh, as i mentioned in the slides the 16 uh, bit wide uh, string so everything after 16 bit is uh, truncated or uh, removed and this way you can see the uh, process uh, name uh, so let's see another example. For example, let, uh, I have a really good example in the uh, script engine box. Okay. Uh, in the previous sessions, we learned about uh, setting breakpoints on a specific functions uh, if you want to just know about the, the everything that i explained in the slides are uh, currently uh, explained here also also explained here but you can always go through the documentation and see a more updated version of those slides uh, there are also different examples that and also the updated version of uh, the functions are also available here for example there are the, these functions this interlock function functions are also supported in hyper dvg uh, so let's see some examples uh, this is a really uh, good example if you want to use uh, the script engine you can go and visit these examples you want to change the state of the machine or tracing the function calls uh, this is a pretty good example let's just see it together uh, as, as is explained uh, there is a function which is described in msdn uh, by microsoft uh, nt open file uh, this is uh, the explanation of these kernel mode functions and we just want to simply uh, see what file what file was trying to be opened by this anti open file uh, from this uh, function uh, we can see that this is the explanation uh, the third uh, argument to the function is object attributes or uh, it's uh, from a, a pointer to object underline attributes structure the object attribute uh, structure is defined uh, like here uh, this is the there there's a length root object name or other attributes here and if you want to uh, see it's really a relative address you can easily use both WinDVG and HyperDVG uh, the DT command if you remember it from the previous parts um <clears throat> as you can see that there's a unicode string field here as an object name uh, so uh, its offset is 0 x 10 after the object attribute so currently we have we know that we want to go uh, to the object attribute which is the third argument and uh, in the top in the object attribute we're gonna uh, add 0x10 and reach to the object name which is the, a unicode string and in the unicode string uh, we have a length maximum length and the buffer itself the buffer itself is a unicode uh, a string uh, which you can see by using uh, this operator I will explain it later but for now uh, 
after uh, reaching to the pointer uh, or uh, to the pointer to this Unicode uh, string, you should uh, find uh, the buffer address and you reference the buffer address. As you, as you know, in the uh, fast calling convention, uh, all the arguments are passed in R6, RDX, R8, R9, and then everything is passed to the stack. So we are gonna see the third argument. So it's passed in the RE, uh, R, uh, R6, RDX, and R8, R9, and these are arguments that are passed in the uh, stack. So uh, this argument is passed in R8 register. So we we will first put a breakpoint on NT open file. I'm not sure if I set the symbols or not, but let's just try. Uh, yeah, everything is. Uh, I will continue the debugging normally, and you can see that the breakpoint zero uh, x one uh, is hit here. Uh, no, uh, I will try to add. Uh, it, here, here is the uh, pointer to object attribute. I will add zero x ten because uh, we go. We want to find the object name here, uh, and after that we will dereference it as a pointer by using the POI uh, argument, and then we will add zero x uh, eight here because we want to reach to the buffer, and in the buffer uh, we will print the address. So let's see. If it's true or not, um, yeah, here is the address. As you can see, that this is the Unicode address, uh, and it uh, it's just name of a function. So if uh, name of a file or name of a name of an object in the Windows. So if I want to remove. Uh, continue seeing it in a human readable, readable format. I will use the WS identifier and evaluate this simple script. Um, oh my God, let's just swap. Yeah. Here it is, here is the name. I will, I will continue it again, and you can see that this name is used. Again, continue, and this name is used. Or continue, and this name is used. 